Hey everybody, uh, something a little bit different. You recognize these two yahoos from uh, Camping Corner. This is Camping Corner. Just something a little bit different. I haven't told you guys anything, anything what we're doing. Nothing. I like to keep you guys guessing, right? You do a good job of that. You're just dying to know what's on my little Your little paper. paper, right? Your little cheat sheet over there. It hit me last night. Okay? Sarah or... No, she actually <laughs> didn't hit me last night. It hit me last night when Sarah and I got into camping. We did it thinking, okay, this is, a, this is an expense. We're going to replace our family vacations with campers. Camping, right? Like, we're going to make our family vacations centered around camping. We don't really ever... I mean, we talk about it with customers and stuff, but we don't really talk about the expense and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I wrote down some rough numbers. You guys are going to have to help me here. But what I wanted to do was kind of talk about, you know, I go to golf stores every year. Mm -hmm. Love it. Don't go, because you'll crowd it up. Stay stay home. <laughs> I go to golf stores every year. Call me, and I'll tell you when, when Sarah's going. <laughs> going. I'll tell you <laughs> what campground and what uh, lot number they're on, and you can be right next to them. Right across from them, right behind them. Remind me not to tell Tony where I'm going. Hey, I wouldn't tell me either. Good point, good point. <laughs> okay, so let's just think about this. If both of you guys have rented condos before, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so what would you say, like, average cost? Let's do family of four, just to make it, make it easy. Family of four. Average cost of a condo for a week at, like, a Gosh Shores or a Destin or someplace like that. For a family of four, what would you what would you think? I mean, I think you would be well a thousand plus. Oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. I found fifteen hundred to three thousand. Yeah, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. You know. That's if you don't have a pool. Hey, right, right. Right, you're not oceanfront. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's split it and say two grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. That work. That okay, works. so two thousand dollars. Now, if you do a condo. You could bring your own groceries and all that kind of stuff, so you can eat there, right? Sure. Right. All right, cool. But you're still three or four hundred dollars. Yes, easy. You're, mm -hmm. you're still spending three or four hundred dollars on groceries. I mean, that's for you know, that's your beer and wine. Yes. And, and then, then you got to buy food. Then you got to buy food. <laughs> then you got to buy food. <laughs> right. I mean, you, know, you can you can you can travel like me, and you know, I got nine cases of beer and three cases of wine for my wife and a bag of potato chips. The beer and the wine was for your wife. No, just the wine, probably. Oh, the wine, yeah, the wine's fine. Okay, okay. Now, I do, I do like the blackberry wine, though. It is really good. <laughs> that stuff's dangerous. It is, it is really good. So, flip that around. Let's say you were going to go do a hotel. We've all stayed in hotels, all right? Mm -hmm. Not, wouldn't be my optimal vacation. Right. Especially the thirty nine ninety five a night. Right, right. So, I was trying to say for Off a family, for a family of four, hundred dollars a night. Yeah. And that's. Oh. And that's probably how the no cheaper more, more than that. I mean, Colton, yeah. uh, Colton and I went to Michigan when we went to the Henry Ford, stayed at a decent decent hotel. Who, ironically, even though none of the restaurants or any nothing was open in Michigan, uh, there was still no discount on the hotel, so it was still like a hundred and ninety five bucks a night for okay. double occupancy. Okay, so, I mean, so you, yeah, you could be you'd be a hundred you know, you'd be two hundred dollars a night. So you could be fourteen hundred dollars for the week, easy. Sure, oh, yeah, easy. sure, and not really have all the amenities that you would have even in a lower budget condo. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Okay, so then, but with the hotel, you're eating out every single meal. Sure, exactly. So sure. I had, and you guys help me out. I had for a family of four going cheap a forty dollar a day breakfast, a forty dollar a day lunch, and then I doubled that for dinner, eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably right. right. So I had that up to eleven hundred and twenty dollars just for food. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So bringing that together with the hotel cost, we're up to twenty five hundred dollars for the hotel. Mm -hmm. Golf State Park for the entire week when I stay there is three hundred and twenty two dollars, which is just crazy when you think about right. it. Right. Now I'm I, I've got split option everybody would have a split option you could go part groceries part eating out mm -hmm. but i mean with the money you're saving between that 1500 and 3000 for a condo or 2500 dollars for a hotel i'm only spending 320 dollars right. like right. It's, it's crazy so i want to challenge you two i want to stay inside because it's freezing cold outside i don't want to go inside outside okay <laughs> right right 
pick two campers that would be perfect vacation campers for a family of four that we have in. Let's put each one of you pick one. I mean, we could probably do the one that we're sitting. I was in right saying now. the one we're sitting in is not a bad option. But but I, to show and and talk about. Um, Somebody mentioned the other day on social, and guys, thank you for giving us tips and ideas on things to do. They were like, you guys talk about all the features and stuff, but even make it more realistic for vacationing. Like, oh, look, this refrigerator will hold a week's worth of groceries, or you have that pantry and stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. So let's do, each of you do a camper apiece, and talk about what makes it perfect for a family of four to vacation in. Because... You know, my, my sales pitch in this is what we do. Every year, our vacation is that. We're saving money every year that we're spending on our camper. But then we get to go on vacation every weekend because we get to hang out with your silly butt up at the campground all the time. So, Well, you know, one of the things, and, and, and something we should probably should add to this discussion is, especially for new people that have never thought about seasonal camping. Uh-huh. You know, a, as a seasonal camper... You know, running through the numbers of what it costs you to go, you know, to Gulf Shores. Now, granted, you know, the campground doesn't have, you know, beautiful crystal blue water. Right. You know, so on like that. But, you know, average cost of year, you know, annual lot rent for a, for a seasonal campground spot, 16 to, say, 16 to $2,000 a year. Uh huh. Then you've got a, you know, on average, a couple hundred dollars a month for your, your camper payment. Okay. So 200, you know, two, just let's just call it 200 for simple math because I'm not that smart. So $200 times 12, uh -huh. that's 2,400 bucks. Yep. Plus your two grand for your lot rent for the year. Yeah. Right? So you're $4,400 a year. You're still, you know, and I think if you seasonal camp, your grocery expense isn't any different. Than your home grocery Then, then what's your home, you know, what, what you're doing for home. Right. Because you're, pa you know, packing stuff and bringing it to the campground. Right. Um, and then I think, my, you know, on average, my my electric bill at the campground, I run my air conditioner all year. I know you do the same. Yep. You know, $30-odd a month. Right. You know, 30 to $50 a month, depending on where you go. So, realistically, we spend an entire year in the campground. Mm -hmm. Every weekend. Mm -hmm. Every single weekend. With you know, family and friends and all that stuff and get away from the house for realistically what you could easily spend for one vacation. For one week's vacation with the family. Now granted, don't have the beach, don't have the crystal blue water. Right. But you also don't have the hectic hustle and bustle of travel and driving there and driving. But it's out. also not just one week a year that you're vacationing. Right. It's, you're vacationing every it's, weekend. It's unplugging every single weekend. How far do you live from the campground, your, your residence? 25 minutes. Okay, I'm 30 minutes from, we camp at the same campground, I'm 30 minutes from it. It is it is really unbelievable and, and how far, I know you're building your house, when you had your house and your camper at a spot, how far, how far away were you? We were always 30 to 40 minutes from our house. It's unbelievable how different it feels just being 30 minutes away from the house, isn't it? Yeah. I, like, it's, it's insane. Even if there's nothing to do, no swimming pool, no putt-putt, no, no anything, just 30 minutes away from the house is a, a, a vacation in and of itself. Sure, because you're breaking well, away from your normal, your normal daily life. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you're, when you're at home, how hard is it just to sit down and really relax? Because you know you're always thinking about, I gotta hey, do this. I gotta I, yeah, do that. I, I, you know, I need to get that load of laundry. You know, I need to get that next load of laundry in. Mm -hmm. I need to fold what's in the dryer. Yep. You know, it's you know, it's been you know a couple days since we've stripped the bed. You know, I could really do that. Hey, I've been wanting to rearrange the this or rearrange that or not to mention the honeydew list at the white time. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and don't don't pretend like you don't have a honeydew list for. your... No, no comment. The, they, they, it's not huge right now because they're building a yeah. house. Wait till they move in. Oh yeah, his yeah. honeydew list is going to be yeah. huge when you move in. But it's always, not you really. know, it's always funny when you talk to people that that are brand new or just thinking about it because you know they they can't grasp the concept of it's a complete. It is a completely different thing just to sit down in the campground because. There's only a hand, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out. I really need to go out and pick them sticks up that, that <laughs> fell out of the tree in the yard. Right. But then in turn, you just pick them up, throw them in the fire pit, and then you're done. when you build the Enjoy fire, the fire pit. when you, when you right. build the fire later on. Or the mowing that takes 12 minutes. Yeah. 
Okay, okay, so show us each one of you. Show us a caper, and it's fine if one of you wants to cheat and use this one. But really, talk about the features that make it a vacation. A vacation. Right. I mean, and, and to your point, every weekend's a vacation, but a destination vacation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Take it away. So I'm choosing the Cougar 364 as my family vacation camper. You can definitely sleep way more than four people in this thing. But you got Tony's leaning on it, the huge residential refrigerator that is definitely going to help you hold all those groceries. And then even behind rear, Dan's opening it, a huge pantry. I mean, you could really use that for not just groceries, any linens or anything. I mean, the thing is ginormous. You are one and a half baths on this coach as well, which is nice because when you're on a week's vacation, a family you're all getting ready at the same time to go do whatever so you've got plenty of space for all that um the thing i like is you get your king size bed in the main bedroom but then you've got a big bed back here as well and then the loft up above so a lot of sleeping space and this is good if you've got older kids even other adults that might go with you and then if you've got the little ones i was just gonna say mallory even as as adults, if you're empty nesters and you wanted to take your mother and father along or a set of friends along on your week's vacation, right? now you're cheaping it even more because you're making them split the cost of that $320 for the week, <laughs> sure. but they've got their own private area in this particular unit. Exactly. So this is be this would be my top pick that's in the showroom, of course, for that family of four vacation. See ya. Cool. You know, this floor plan, um, some, some friends of mine, um, the Daboos, Jenny and Jason, bought, and they've got a 364 on order. And their main reason for it, they're coming out of a double over double corner bed or uh, uh, corner bunks mm -hmm. uh, travel trailer, 27 foot. Stepping way up to this because their daughters are, you know, both late in high school. So they're preparing for the idea that number one, the girls are at an age where they don't really want to sleep in traditional yeah. bunk beds. So you got a loft, you got a full size bed. They got plenty of storage space in there for their clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but they're preparing for the idea of, of being empty nesters. So yeah. you know, super awesome floor plan. You know, all the way around. One of the things why we're doing this. Hopefully the video doesn't go too long, guys. But I think we're covering a lot of really good information. Something I hear a lot, I even got a little flack from this until you give them the explanation, is, you know, Sarah and I upgraded this year. Mm -hmm. We went from our Puma Travel Trailer, 32 RKTS, which I absolutely love. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. But we went to the 366 RDS, Cougar, mm -hmm. fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. We wanted more space. Mm -hmm. And what was weird is, is we're now empty nesters, but we wanted bigger. more space. We right. wanted bigger, we wanted more space. True. We do seasonally camp at it, so having the extra space at the campground. But... I think it's a common misconception where people think that they underbuy or overbuy their first time. And I don't think that's really correct. You buy based off the circumstances that you have at the time, and circumstances change. Don't you agree? Yeah, I, I, yeah, they do. Um, you know, it, common sense, you know, the, the misconception, common sense is that when you become empty nesters, you go smaller. Uh-huh. You right. know. We, we buy a big coach for a family, and then we downsize. But but realistically, we know that what we really see is, uh, you know, we, we buy, you know, the functionality for us. And just because there's, you know, less little feet running around doesn't mean that I want less feet to be to be camping. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. prime example, I mean, you've, you've sold this floor plan to somebody that's got their kids are older, their girls are older. Right. I've sold this floor plan to a couple that was empty nesters, but they like to take it to races, and sure. so they want other couples to go with them. Sure. So this bedroom space allows them to bring those adult couples with them, and they're not sleeping in bunks. Yeah. Well, so. our path, our path was, I camped as a kid. Sarah didn't as much. She did right. some. Let's buy a pop up. Let's see if we use it. Let's right. see if we make these trips. Then it was like, yep, we're doing it all the time, but man, a pop-up, as fun as they are, is a pain in the butt because you got to pack everything in your tow vehicle. Yep. Unpack everything, pack everything back up in your tow vehicle. So we're like, okay, we're making the investment. We're going with a travel trailer. And at the time, our son was younger. He went with us. 
His girlfriend would go with this, who just happens to be behind the camera right now. <laughs> um, and then now we're at a new stage. You know, that was that was four years ago. Now we're okay. We're avid campers. We're sure. seasonal campers. It's time. It's time to upgrade. So I think I think that situation's unique, and that's why I'm gonna do a little sales pitch here. Ready? Go for it. That's why I think what we do here with that interview process, when a person comes in. Is so vital. Uh, if you didn't catch Tip Tuesdays, make sure you catch them. One of the things we talked about was knowing the weight that your tow vehicle could pull. Sure. But then having at least a rough idea of what you anticipated to do with your camper to make your guys' life easier when they come in. Right. I mean, you're eventually going to drag it out of them. Right. But how many times do you have somebody come in and go, I don't know what I want to do with it? A lot. Right. And then you're like, well, okay, how many people do you have in your well, family? You but, know? but on the flip side, kind of, attend, you know, there, there's a flip side to that. Um, you know, how many times do people come in and, you know, and, and, and let's say new people, new into the RV industry. They're, they're wanting to see, you know, they're wanting to get a feel of this because of COVID. They know they're not going to be traveling. They're not getting on the cruise ship. They're, you know, they just, they know that they're going to buckle down and, and stay a little closer to home and get reconnected with family. So they come in and you have this list of, I, I got to have this, 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 and this. And we sit down as as professionals and the way our process works here at the dealership doing that interview process and all of a sudden they fall in love with something that only has one of the things <laughs> yeah. that were on that list and i think a lot of that is because they they didn't know that some of those things were available uh -huh. now on the flip side the dealerships that somebody can go to that they don't do any type of interview. They don't sit down and ask, you know, tell me, Dan, how are you going to use it? Where are you going to use it? When are you going to use it? How many yep. people are going to sleep? Da, 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 da. Then all of a sudden, as a consumer, you've got those five things in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that, that's important. So you walk around a dealership, you look at everything on the lot, you get confused mm -hmm. because you looked at stuff that had some of that stuff that didn't have all that. Yeah. And then you leave there going, oh my gosh, I'm more confused than I've ever been in my life. This is impossible. Yeah, yeah this is impossible. How do people do this? Yes. You know, so that's one of the things that I find enjoyable um, is, is, you know, to help people narrow that down onto what is the most important thing for me. Yeah. You know. Awesome. Let's see your camera. What's Tony going to so, do? Let's go. So, keeping on a budget, bang for the buck, yep. bang for the budget. If you've got a family, this is ridiculously tough to beat. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the 272 BH hideout. So a couple cool things about it: you do have double over double bunks back here, so you've got sleeping for you know up to four back here. The dinette makes a bed, the sofa makes a bed, and you got a queen size bed up front. Big 12 volt refrigerator, so there's plenty of you know food storage. There's a slideable shelf, which gives you room for a gallon of milk or two. But you've got a great food pantry right here, so you can store all the chips, the dips, you know, the Oreos, all that stuff in there. If you're going to take that long trip, the versatility, you can remove the top shelf, and there's a hanging rod in here, so now you've got a place that you can actually pack the kids' clothes uh -huh. mm -hmm. and store some clothes. There is storage space underneath the, the bottom bunk. There's storage space underneath, you know, the, the dinette. You've got access right into the bathroom from here. You've got a porcelain toilet. There's also an exit that goes from the outside directly into the bathroom so the kids aren't running around. So if you've taken it on that vacation, you've actually traveled to that vacation, they've got a beach, the kids have got sand <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> and they've got to go to the restroom. Rather than running through the inside of the coach, they can go straight into the bathroom, straight out, you know, cut down on mom and dad's time of cleaning up the floor. There is a built-in central back Damn, system. You do dirty happens. it up, you've got your bathroom. You know, That's all that cool I stuff. I had in mind, you know. central back. But one of the cool things about this coach is you're under 200 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. You know, you're under two. Easy to justify. You know, easy. You know, very easy to justify. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it's not as simple as saying you know everybody's got a couple hundred dollars worth of disposable income that they can throw around. But if somebody's thinking about camping and thinking about getting in into to camping with a family or taking vacations, this is about as affordable. And as, there's plenty as of room. 
if there's if you have a rainy day on vacation, which you're sucks, gonna, you yeah. hate it. But yeah. if you have a rainy day on vacation, there's four of us in here right now. You're not yeah. gonna feel cramped. I don't feel claustrophobic yeah. or anything. Yeah. I mean, you're you're a good distance away. I don't yeah. have to I don't have to touch you. Little, like T Rex arms. I felt like the little brother and sister not touching you, not <laughs> touching you, you, not touching you. Mallory's T Rex. <laughs> well, guys, this has been like probably a 40 minute plus video, but I think it was really informative. Plus, Tony and I both like to flap our lips a lot. This has been a lot of you two more this time. You, but I'm okay with it. Have you it. ever, what's that jump rope thing? You just gotta to jump in. You just gotta learn to jump in that thing. Like, Tony's <laughs> one rope, I'm the other. You just gotta get in there. No, I, I don't mind. I love it, you guys. But, guys, uh, I will let you close it out because it is your show, Camping Corner. I just kind of injected myself today. Uh, so, yeah. See Thank ya. you both. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Dan comes to us every Friday now saying, we're going to do something different today. Yeah. And we never know what it is. So yeah. we just go with the flow. Yeah. And for the most part, in the t like 20 or 30 foot walk from our office to wherever we're going to start filming, that's when we find out about it. So, um, but you know, very cool. We're getting closer and closer to camping season all the time. You know, here we are. We've, we've cracked, you know, we've cracked the, the old year. We've, we've, you know, kicked 2020 to the curb. You know, we're rocking on 2021 now. Um, I know my wife has been shopping for trinkets and things uh -huh. like that for the campground already. <laughs> uh -huh. She brought home a uh, solar-powered light-up uh, tiki guy to put, you know, uh, to put the campground already. So she's buying that stuff. My brother-in-law got me a couple new flamingos for, uh, nice. for the campground. Nice. Um, I don't know how I got infatuated with flamingos, but it just fell upon it, it's just kind of the way it works. But, um, you know... Guys, let us know what kind of ideas you have, um, yes. you know, and if you're new to camping and you have some questions, make sure you put the comments below and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk about those in next week's show. All right. So anyway, thanks guys. Thank you guys.